Good morning and welcome to St Stephen's. Welcome if you're joining us online. It's good to have you with us, whether you're live or catch up. Um, but welcome to those in St Stephen's in the building today as well. If you're a visitor, particularly welcome to you. My name's Mark Barker, I'm the vicar here. I'm going to be leading us through the service. Um, young people and children are going to be going out to groups in a little while. Before they go out, we're going to have an opportunity for some edge sharing, um, everyday God encounters, something we try and do each week. Um, so it'll be an opportunity um, for one or two people to share um, what God's been doing or where you've met with God, encountered God in the last week or so. Um, and then we're going to be looking at another post-resurrection encounter with Jesus as Melissa comes and shares about the commission Jesus gave to his disciples to go and make disciples of all people. So that's a bit of what's going on this morning, um, but as we gather, let's stand. We're going to join in a call to worship adapted from Psalm 9 and then go into a couple of songs of praise. So please stand, and some words will come up on the screen. Do join in the bold bits in response. We've got those, thank you. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. We will tell of all the marvellous things you have done. I will be filled with joy because of you. We will sing praises to your name, O Most High. I will sing praises to the Lord who reigns in Jerusalem. We will tell the world about your unforgettable deeds. So let's worship God in song.
Lord, we believe in you because you are our hope. You are the light of the world. And in all that's going on in our world today, we just thank you that you are that light. You are that hope. And we trust in you. Amen. Please be seated. So every day, God encounters. Have you got something you'd like to share? I've got a couple of people, or I've got one person coming up, I've got one to read, but if anybody else has got an edge they'd like to share, then do come forward. So Jasper's going to come and share first. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Um, so you may remember a few months ago, I, I was up here and I was speaking about this course I was doing called Amplify, uh, which is this young evangelist academy, uh, which I was involved in. And uh, I was speaking about how God was really using the, uh, my generation, this young generation, uh, and moving and, and making a change. And uh, back in March, I was able to go on the second residential of the year. Uh, and basically this residential this weekend was focused around the theme of boldness. So this idea that we are a bold generation, a bold remnant of young people which God is using to change the world. And about a few weeks before uh, Amplify, uh, I remember my life really just went very chaotic in just a matter of a few days really. Uh, the youth group will remember me coming along on Friday at the end of the week and just not really knowing where to start. Uh, so much happened, uh, it was all very confusing. Um, but despite that, I had such a level of peace. Uh, and the only way I can really describe that is um, in 1 Peter 1 verse 8, which talks about how because we believe, we have this inexpressible and glorious joy within us. And that was the only way I can really describe it. I had this inexpressible and glorious joy within me, which didn't quite make sense. And so a few weeks passed and I went off to Amplify and I was able to meet some more young people there um, who I'm good friends with. And what I saw there was more young people who uh, maybe also life was a bit chaotic for them. You know, maybe they had just lost loved ones. Maybe they had friends who were really struggling. Maybe they had past trauma which had really affected them. But what I saw was this inexpressible and glorious joy within them because they had accepted the love of Christ in their hearts. And it really just got me thinking, like, what the enemy meant for evil, God intends for good. Um, what the enemy meant for evil, God intends for good. And I, that just really just resonates with me. And throughout the weekend, I was able to receive some prayer just for one of the things which was really on my mind, which was sort of about life after school, what I'm going to go into. I know I want to go into ministry. What's that going to look like? Where am I going to go? Uh, and doors just really opened. I was able to see some prayer, and people got me in contact with other people. Uh, and yesterday, I was able to be on a call with someone um, for a potential placement somewhere. Um, so God is really moving, and it just really struck me that when we give him our all, when we surrender our all to him, you know, he really blesses us, and he gives us that inexpressible and glorious joy. Um, so yeah, that's my, that's my mini edge. Thank you very much, Jasper. That's great. Anybody else want to share something God's been doing? That David's like he's on the move. So, want to share, David? Uh, I had quite an interesting conversation with one of the suppliers that we work with, who used to be an addict and now runs a cabling company, having left his job and his cocaine habit behind him in the city. And he um, did a cabling job at a school in Wales over the Easter holidays. And he said, uh, when I get tired, I get very, very irritable. And we'd spoken before he went to do his cabling job. And I suggested that he might pray about his work and that God was actually interested in that. And through his recovery program, they talk a lot about a higher power. And he said, but, you know, that sounds kind of blasphemous. Aren't you supposed to pray for hungry people? You know, why would God bother about me and my work? Anyway, he went down to this school, and they worked from about 7 a.m. in the morning, off until 11 o'clock at night, for 17 days straight. And he said, I really prayed that I wouldn't become irritable. And he said, it was the most unbelievable miracle that I was not grumpy with my team of six engineers. And he said, it was overwhelmingly beautiful, 
not me, what God did, but it was also overwhelmingly scary that God is paying attention to me and the work that I'm doing. It's really exciting, but it's pretty terrifying. And it was such an encouragement to see someone like that, thinking about God involved in his work. And we lost a bunch of clients at our business last year. Um, and this week, we've had four different organizations get in touch out of the blue and say, could you do our IT support? <laughs> so it's been amazing to see God at work all around the place. Thank you. And I'm going to read an edge that I've been sent that's going to stay anonymous. Um, but it's from Easter, and part of the Easter story that struck somebody in a situation that they found themselves in. So just before Easter, I was becoming increasingly worried and upset about one of my adult children who's been unwell for some time and was having another bad patch. I just wanted to help or do something to make things better. But of course, he's an adult and didn't want me interfering. Trying to talk to him made it worse. I just did not know what I could do. I went to the Good Friday Hour at the Cross, at which Mark, me, led us through the story of the crucifixion using John 19. I'm not good at being quiet and reflective, so I was struggling. As Mark reached verse 25, which reads, Near the cross stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife, and the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. It really hit me. Mary was there. She couldn't do anything. She couldn't stop the crucifixion, but she was there. She was praying for her son, I'm sure. I can't imagine what she must have been feeling. I'm not sure I could have been there. I think I would have run. But she stayed there with Jesus until the end. And I felt that God was saying to me, just be there with your child. Wait, pray, but most of all, just be there. I know now all I can do is be there and pray and wait and be ready for whatever happens. That's a great story of God speaking through a tiny little verse in the Bible. Probably we often just read over and don't um, recognise or take on board, but just Mary standing at the cross and how that spoke into that situation for that person. So thank you um, for those edge um, encounters. Our children and young people are going to go out to groups now, so let's pray for them. Lord, we thank you that we can encounter you every day, each day, in the normal and in the bigger things, in our home, in our work, in, in school, in daily life. And we pray that whether we're staying here in church or whether we're going out into groups now, that we may encounter you afresh this morning. That you may speak to us, you may lead us, you may help us grow as followers of the Lord Jesus. Amen. The children and young people head out to their groups with their leaders. The rest of us are going to stand as we sing another song, Oh, for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. Let's stand to worship.
Please be seated. We're going to come to a time of confession now, so let's take a moment of quiet as we just offer to God our lives and acknowledge those things that we've done wrong, perhaps things we don't realise we've done wrong, but just acknowledge our need of forgiveness and God's cleansing And some words of confession which you'll join together are on the screen. Let's pray together. God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus who died for us, forgive us all that is past and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins, open our eyes to God's truth, strengthen us to do God's will, and give us the joy of his kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to continue in prayer as Liz comes and leads us. Good morning. Our prayers today follow various encounters with Jesus following his resurrection. You're invited to respond to the refrain, the Lord is risen with, he is with us always. The Lord is risen he is with us always. The Lord is risen. He is with us always. The Lord is risen. He is with us always. Jesus called Mary Magdalene by name when she found the empty tomb. Thank you, Jesus, that you call each one of us by name and for your unconditional love for each and every one of us, sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to reveal to us this love and to set us free. We praise you that you have made us for fellowship with you and each other, that we might experience something of the joy and glory that we shall know when we enter into eternal life in heaven. We praise you for all that you have done for us in Christ for his life lived to the full in your love, for his death for us in our place as a sign of your grace, for his mighty resurrection and the evidence of your power at work in him. We ask you to fill us with your grace, that we may praise you here and through the coming week. The Lord is risen. He is with us always. Jesus met with the couple on the road to Emmaus and walked alongside them in their loss and disappointment. Lord, we, Lord Jesus, we ask you to walk with us and those we know who are experiencing pain, loss, frustration and disappointment. In the individual moments of our day-to-day -day lives, we cling to the hope we have in you to be present with us as well as focusing on the enduring hope found in the resurrection of Jesus, shining as a steadfast light, always leading the way. Help us to respond to the good news of your resurrection so that others are encouraged to walk in your light of hope and joy, knowing you as Lord. The Lord is risen. He is with us always. And as Jesus appeared to Thomas, who doubted Jesus' resurrection, Jesus shows us his hands and his side and offers us his peace when life seems empty or hopeless. Lord Jesus, even though we won't understand everything and life won't always be easy, 
Thank you that we can trust you and receive your peace beyond understanding through what you have done on the cross and your resurrection. Thank you for being our rock of peace, that we can stand on with the assurance that we are deeply loved and sustained. We speak to you now in a moment of silence about any doubts or questions we may have, or name areas of conflict in the world, and invite Jesus to bring his peace and love into them. The Lord is risen. He is, is with us always. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. As Jesus met with Simon Peter while he was about his daily job of fishing and invited him to breakfast on the beach, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you invite us to notice you accompanying us in our everyday lives and are always waiting to spend time for us to spend time with you. Thank you that you restore us from our buried shame and pain. We ask you to heal those areas of brokenness in our lives so we can be brought into freedom. Freedom not in what we can have or do, but finding freedom in your love for each one of us. Lord Jesus, we pray that we will grow ever closer to you day by day. The Lord is risen. He is with us always. And Jesus appeared dramatically to Saul. And Saul's purpose was completely transformed and turned around as he changed from persecuting Christians to bringing others to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are always searching for us through your Holy Spirit inviting us to know you more. As we respond to that invitation, help us to discover the fullness of the purpose you have planned for us. How we can use our gifts to reach out to others. <clears throat> we ask you to give us an eternal perspective for places or situations where we are desperate to see transformation. Holding on to the belief that everything and anything is possible with you. May our purpose be a journey towards a life of meaning where we can truly live in the now and look forward to a future in his everlasting presence. The Lord is risen. He is with us always. Lord Jesus, we praise you that your resurrection power is available to all who put their trust in you. For the power of your Holy Spirit who fills the whole universe and transforms our lives and the life of your church. Lord, we praise you that despite our weakness, our failure and frailty of faith, you still offer us hope and joy and the power that makes all things new. We pray fill us with your grace that we may praise you here throughout our lives and evermore. The Lord is with us. Sorry, the Lord is risen. He is with us always. Amen. So let us say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Liz. to publish some bands of marriage um, and so I published bands of marriage between David Allen Lee and Paula Janet Gregory both resident in this parish um, this is for the third time of asking and between Adam James Duncan and Isabel Christine Sarah Benz Copin 
both of this parish for the first time of a uh, second time of asking, and between Benedict Wesley Conway Jones and Patricia Hannah Galbraith Olive, both of this parish again for the second time of asking. If anyone knows any reason why those couples cannot be married, you must let me know. Let's pray for them. Heavenly Father, we pray for David and Paula, for Adam and Isabel, for Benedict and Patricia, as they prepare for their wedding days over the next few weeks. We pray that you'll be in all their preparation. We pray that their wedding days will be days of great celebration, will go smoothly and well. But we pray that you'll be at the heart of their lives together, both now and forevermore. Amen. A few notices just to share of things coming up. Um, firstly, we've got plugged in this evening, um, 6 o'clock here for 6.30 start, um, refreshments to start with. Do come along and join in um, with that. Then next Sunday, um, we've got church lunch um, straight after the morning service, and then uh, 6 o'clock in the evening, we've got a prayer gathering um, here in church as well, to pray, continue to pray for the life of the church and ministry of the church here. Um, coming up in beginning of June, um, we've got the annual church meeting, and if you want to be part of that and to vote on that, um, you need to be on the electoral roll. So if you're not on the electoral roll now, um, I think this is about the last week or opportunity um, to sign up to be on the electoral roll. Um, so do be in touch. I think there's forms at the back of church um, if you want one of those. And then Craig has got a notice about you. Morning, everybody. Um, so our, our older elements youth, which meet on a Sunday, but also on a Friday, has been, it's really been thriving and flourishing. And, and as a group, they've grown together, but also we've seen them grow in their passion for God as well. So that's been a real kind of positive, a real highlight. So we're really excited that we are, we're just about to start um, a similar group, but for um, our, our younger elements age. So it's starting this Thursday uh, in the community, community centre. We've got to get the numbers right. So it's from four till half past five, and it's for anyone in school years seven, eight, and nine. Looking around, I appreciate that's, that's literally none of us, but... Um, <laughs> If you know anyone in year seven, eight, and nine, then um, please do encourage them. So it's four till half past five, starting this Thursday. If they can't make it this Thursday, that's fine, because I think we're planning to run it every week. So um, uh, if this Thursday doesn't work out, then uh, encourage them to come along. So uh, Rachel is going to be involved. Also, Billy and Tony are going to be involved as well. And uh, I think it's going to be really good. So just to encourage you, if you know anyone in year seven, eight, and nine, do let them know. Thank you, Craig. You just told us all that we're old. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're going to have our reading in a moment, then Melissa's going to come and share with us. But as we do, let's bow our heads and pray. Father God, we thank you that you speak to us, that we encounter you. And your word is one of those ways that we grow in our faith and encounter you afresh. As we hear your word spoken, as Melissa comes and shares with us, we pray that you'll be speaking to us. Pray that you'll take what Melissa has prepared and use her this morning to speak into our lives and all that we are as followers of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amanda, I think, is coming to read. And then Melissa's going to share. This morning's reading can be found on page 1000 in the Church Bibles. It's Matthew 28, starting at verse 16. The Great Commission. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, 
They worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. So just a quick prayer. May the words of my mouth be acceptable in your sight, Lord Jesus. Amen. I noticed a lot of Bibles are out, so a little later I'm going to be speaking about a couple of verses in Galatians that relate to this. So if you want to find Galatians in your Bible now, then that will help you a little bit later. So our theme today is Go Therefore. Sometimes this is called the Great Commission. And I wanted to start this morning telling you a running anecdote, because today is the London Marathon. So for those of you running the London Marathon and catching up later, all the best of luck. Now, when I was about 16 years old, I was in a ballet school, and I decided to learn how to run. But I knew nothing about running, nothing at all. And my father used to train for ultra marathons. So of course, he had the authority on running. And I said to him, Dad, will you please teach me how to run? Of course he did. And off we went, starting on our runs. Sometimes it was a little bit frustrating for me because at the time, even though I wasn't cardiovascularly fit, neither was my dad. And I had to run at his pace. And I felt that I could do more and I could go further and faster and quicker. But he slowed me down. He said, stay with me. Stay with me, we're going together. And this proved good for me because he was pacing me. And he realized that then, in that way, I could do the full distance. So I think that that's a very important understanding of this little passage. Because when Jesus says those words, go therefore, our theme for today, he is saying he has authority in the whole of heaven and the whole of earth, and we should listen to him, we should go because he has authority and be his disciples and make disciples. A little earlier in the week, in Matthew 21, Jesus has entered into Jerusalem and his authority is questioned. The chief priests ask him, by what authority are you doing these things? And interestingly, Jesus answers with a question. He says, who do you believe the authority of John's baptism is through? And the chief priests can't answer him. They say to him, well, they discuss it together and they say, well, if we say that it's from heaven, then he's going to say he doesn't believe. We should have believed him. If we say it's from earth, the people will get mad because they think John is a prophet. So we're just going to say we don't really know where the authority of John's baptism is. So Jesus says, well, then neither will I tell you where my authority comes from. Jesus does, however, tell us. In our passage in Matthew 28, Jesus is speaking to his disciples. We are his disciples. Presumably already baptized, we are called, nay, commanded to go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations. He is saying, go because I have authority. Go and I will be with you. He's just said that all authority has been given to him in heaven and on earth. But some of his disciples are still doubting. So that's why he's reassuring them. So because of his authority and his love for us, he's asking us to join him in his ministry. He's saying, go, and 
get baptized. So let's talk a little bit about those two points. Baptism is entry into God's family, becoming a child of God, belonging. Discipleship is carrying out the activity of God in us, following Christ. Baptism is closely linked with salvation, and in baptism, you are dying to self and living with Christ. So in Galatians 2.20, for those of you who want to look it up, it says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. A little later in Galatians 3, 26, it says, So Christ, in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. So when you are baptized, you clothe yourself in Christ. You are a child of God. All are equal. In baptism, you die to self and live in Christ. You offer your, love, your life to Christ in the way that you live, the way that you love, and the example that you set. We as baptized disciples go because of Christ's authority. We make disciples, baptize them, and then they go. But why does Jesus command us to go when we recognize his authority? We just came back from a trip to South Africa over the Easter. It was a lovely holiday. And on the very last night, my husband and I went out for dinner at a hotel. And the waiter was telling us a story about some customer of his who flew overseas for work 10 times a year. He was very impressed with this because in South Africa, to go overseas, it's, it's really, really far. And we were discussing the travel times and how long it took. And he said this customer was like a father to him. And occasionally, when he came back from these work trips, he would bring him a key ring. And this got me thinking about the father-son relationship. And it was really nice of our waiter to give this customer that honorary title of father. And I'm not here to judge that situation. I think that's lovely. But I thought to myself, if he really was the son of this man who went overseas for work, would he not have gone with? Would he not have wanted to be part of the family business? Would the father not have said, come with me, come with me? Come and see my business, see where I go. And I think that that is why Jesus is telling us to go and I will be with you. That is like saying, come and join me in my business. And I think that the business of God is the business of salvation. A tutor of mine last Monday said something like, in the parable of the 5,000, we can't increase the bread and the fish, but we can participate by handing out the baskets. It's important to know what a disciple is if we're going to be a disciple and if we're going to make disciples. So to be a disciple, we have to deny ourselves and take up our cross. In baptism and the Eucharist, we're filled with God's grace, which is free. However, we were bought with a price. So although we should take advantage of this free grace, we should also want to serve the Lord in love and appreciation for what he has done for us. A famous theologian called Dietrich Bonhoeffer once wrote a book called The Cost of Discipleship. In this book, he describes what it is to be a disciple and how it should be costly. I quote, he says, cheap grace is the preaching of forgiveness without requiring repentance, baptism without church discipline, 
communion without confession, absolution without personal confession, cheap grace is grace without discipleship, grace without the cross, grace without Jesus Christ living and incarnate. Now, talking about running still, since it's the marathon, there is a very good example of, in ancient times, why we call it the marathon, a messenger who went running to give the message of victory that the battle had been won. And he ran in the same day all the way to Marathon, to Sparta, to Athens, back to Marathon, and then he died. And it's a really, really, really long way. So what I was thinking is in costly discipleship, when you absolutely love the Lord and you are so happy that you're part of this kingdom, you belong to Christ, that joy, that overwhelming joy that Jasper was talking about in his edge should shine through so much that you should want to live your lives like disciples, running and running and running for the Lord, discipling, making other disciples. Does it cost you something to go there for? Someone recently asked me, why do you go to church? Why don't you have a nice sleep-in or go out for brunch? Well, I believe we come here because this is God's house of prayer, where we come to join in worship. We belong to the body of Christ. In baptism and the Eucharist, we share in the salvation of Jesus Christ through his grace. We follow him and are his disciples because we love him, and we love him because he first loved us. He commanded us to go, therefore, and make disciples, then baptize them so that they can do the same. We need to yearn to have this treasure from God, the gift of belonging to the kingdom of God. We are kingdom builders, and we belong to Christ. I know some people who come to church and they don't know why they come. They come over and over and they are still searching and some are doubting. And that is okay. The Lord reassured his disciples by telling them that he has authority. If that is you doubting, be reassured. Not everyone has a Damascus conversion. Sometimes the Lord chips away at your heart week by week, year by year. If you feel that you're a little further on in your journey, think about how you can make those that are searching feel welcome. Christ invites all, and we are all on different stages of our journey. So help each other by not judging each other and by being patient. The Lord has no deadline. Be patient with those that you encounter outside of the church that are not disciples yet. If you think about how to catch a fish, there's a lot of waiting. But when they do bite, be ready to work hard for your catch. It may be like Ernest Hemingway's The Old Man in the Sea, but remember the action of discipleship is Christ in us. He will strengthen us. So get alone with God and see what he wants you to do. That might be speaking to your children, speaking to your grandchildren, your work colleagues, proclaiming the word of God. Be joyous. And if someone asks you why you are that way, tell them about Christ. In truth, we all have moments when our spinnaker is up and we are sailing fast. And we have moments of windless waiting. I want to encourage you with a quote from Michael Ramsey. If in sincerity you cannot say that you want God, you can perhaps tell him that you want to want him. And if you cannot say even that, perhaps you can say that you want to want to want him. So hoist your sails and go. Go because you have been commanded and you have Christ with you. He has all authority in heaven and on earth. Be a disciple and make disciples. 
Be witness in the power of the Holy Spirit. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. Just take a moment of quiet. Who are the people you spend time with? At home, at work, in the community? Who are the people that Jesus may be saying to you, go? Go and make disciples. even as we think of that go and make disciples we recognize our need to grow as disciples our need of more of Jesus in our lives to know his authority to know his love to know his compassion to know his empowering And so, Lord, I want to pray that you may fill us with more of you. That we may become more like you, more empowered by you, more on fire for you. That we may grow as your disciples. That as we hear that commission to go, we may know that we are going in your name and equipped by you. So Lord, even now as we wait, will you fill us afresh with your spirit? deepen our passion to know you more. Amen. We're going to stand to worship God in a couple of songs.
please be seated. As we come towards the end of our service, do stay for refreshments. Um, they serve at the back. Um, if you're new to church, do say hello to myself, Craig or Jess, or one of the people with a badge on at the back. But as we come to an end, there's also an opportunity to give. Many people give by regular standing order, but there are machines and plates by the doors as well if you want to give. But we offer all our gifts, whatever people give in money, in time, in serving, using the gifts that God has given them in the words of an offertory prayer that will be on the screen now. Let's pray this together. All things have their origin with you, Lord, and from these riches we freely give that your church might grow in this place and throughout the world. Amen. And a closing prayer. May God the Father, who has given to his Son the name above every name, strengthen you to proclaim Christ as Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and all those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen.